I really enjoy most of his writing, but particularly his short stories, which are like jewels, but oftentimes bittersweet. An example is this one. Barich is a lovely place. The suster chatters over stony ways and babbles on the pebbles, tripping like a skillful dancing girl in through the woods below the lonely hills. A flight of 150 steps rises from the river, and above that flight on the river's brim and at the foot of the hills, there stands a solitary marble palace. Around it, there is no habitation of man, the village and the cotton mart of Barrage being far off. About 250 years ago, the Emperor Mahmud Shah II had built this lonely palace for his pleasure and luxury. In his days, jets of rose water spurted from its fountains, and the cold marble floors of its spray cooled rooms, young Persian damsels would sit, their hair dishevelled before bathing and splashing their soft, naked feet in the clear water of the reservoirs, would sing to the tune of the guitar, the guzzles of their vineyards. The fountains play no longer, the songs have ceased, no longer do snow-white feet step gracefully on the snowy marble. It is but the vast and solitary quarters of cess collectors like us, men oppressed with solitude and deprived of the society of women. Now Kareem Khan, the old clerk of my office, warned me repeatedly not to take up my abode there. Pass the day there if you like, said he, but never stay the night. I passed it off with a light laugh. The servants said they would work till dark and go away at night. I gave my ready assent to the house in such a bad name that even thieves would not venture near it after dark. At first the solitude of the deserted palace weighed upon me like a nightmare. I would stay out and work hard, as hard as possible and as long as possible then return home at night, jaded and tired, go to bed and fall asleep. Before a week had passed, the place began to exert a weird fascination upon me. It is difficult to describe or to induce people to believe, but I felt as if the whole house was like a living organism, slowly and imperceptibly digesting me by the action of some stupefying gastric juice. Perhaps the process had begun as soon as I set my foot in the house, but I distinctly remember the day on which I was first conscious of it. It was the beginning of summer, and the market being dull, I had no work to do. A little before sunset, I was sitting in an armchair near the water's edge, below the steps. The suster had shrunk and sunk low, a broad patch of sand on the other side glowed with the hues of evening. On this side, the pebbles at the bottom of the clear shallow waters were glistening. There was not a breath of wind anywhere, and the still air was laden with an oppressive scent from the spicy shrubs growing on the hills close by. As the sun sank behind the hilltops, a long, dark curtain fell upon the stage of day, and the intervening hills cut short the time in which light and shade mingle at sunset. I thought of going out for a ride, and was bound to get up when I heard a footfall on the steps behind. I looked back, but there was no one. As I sat down again, thinking to be an illusion, I heard many footfalls, as if a large number of persons rushing down the steps. A strange thrill of delight, slightly tinged with fear, passed through my frame. And though there was not a figure before my eyes, methought I saw a bevy of joyous maidens coming down the steps to bathe in the suster in that summer evening. Not a sound was in the valley, in the river, or in the palace to break the silence but I distinctly heard 
that made its gay and mirthful laugh. Like the gurgle of a spring gushing forth in a hundred cascades, as they ran past me in quick, playful pursuit of each other towards the river without noticing me at all. As they were invisible to me, so I was, as it were, invisible to them. The river was perfectly calm, but I felt that its still shallow and clear waters were stirred suddenly by the splash of many an arm jingling with bracelets, that the girls laughed and dashed and spattered water at one another, that the feet of the fair swimmers tossed the tiny waves showers of pearl. Like fragrance wafted away by the wind, they were dispersed by a single breath of the spring. Got to read it, it's fantastic. You see what I mean about being bittersweet 